robots rule the world? How soon will my brain be replaced by nanotech? Hmm? These are the questions inquiring minds want to know. This is, these are the questions MIT professor Marvin Minsky has been trying to answer for, well, over 50 years now, one of the best-known artificial intelligence experts in the world. He has some very definite ideas about the future of artificial intelligence and computing. He joins us right now from satellite, via satellite from Boston, Massachusetts. Professor Minsky, it's so good to have you. Welcome to the show. Oh, nice to meet you, Leo. It's a real honor to, uh, to meet you. you. You started this uh, AI stuff uh, in 1951. Is that when you built SNARK? Uh, yes, it was around then. It was a learning machine that simulated uh, 40 neural synapses, and um, I connected them at random, and then you could train it to do various things by rewarding it when it did the kind of thing you wanted it to. But sometimes it worked and sometimes it couldn't, and it took about 20 years of uh, developing mathematical theories to find out why it could learn some things and not others. The MIT Artificial Intelligence Lab is almost 50 years old now. Is this taking longer than you thought, or did you expect it to take this long or even longer? It's a complicated question because how long things take depends on how many people work on the right things. True. And progress was very fast uh, till about the till around 1980, and then it slowed down, and it's hard to think of reasons for that. But as far as I can see, what happened is that uh, in order to make a machine very smart, it has to have many different ways to do things. But most researchers would pick one way and try to show that that could solve most problems. So now we're in a new phase where we're trying to see how can you make a machine that knows how to do things in many different ways but also has the knowledge to know which one to use for which kind of problem. Oh, that's interesting. Instead of saying, well, we're going to be deterministic or we're going to do a neural network, you have a variety of techniques the machine can choose from? Exactly. Uh, some people want to use a genetic algorithm or, a, as you said, a neural network or statistical methods. But each of those are good for certain kinds of problems and not others. And uh, talking to the young people, one of the things we don't know is which kinds of problems? How do you classify problems so that you know which ones could be solved this way or that right. way? And we're very weak on that. that. That's what will make the machine smarter when we get that kind of knowledge. Is it a failing of humans or a failing of machines? I think that one of the problems is that, uh, that uh, people haven't really tried versatile ways of programming. So most programs will only do one thing, and then when you want to do something else, you have to switch to another program. The other thing, uh, it might sound surprising, is that people debug programs too much. And if you debug a program to fix everything that's wrong with it, it's going to end up very rigid. It'll just mm. do that one thing. And so I think you should stop and make a higher level program which knows what it's good at and what it isn't and learns and then, uh, then you can move sideways, and f for something that the program isn't good at, it would know when to switch. Well, that makes sense, because after all, in our own evolution, it's the bugs, in effect, that have allowed us to grow and expand and, and go in new directions, isn't it? It's the mistakes. That's right. Evolution is... Uh, the trouble with evolution, though, is it avoids the most common mistakes, but it wasn't until uh, we got larger brains with memories that you could remember large numbers of not so fatal mistakes. Right. So uh, the average person probably knows 10 million or 20 million things not to do. Uh, one of your colleagues, Ray Kurzweil, is a, a big fan of the singularity. I know that's something that people are talking a lot about now, where the, the, the human brain and the robot brain cross paths in terms of intelligence. Do you believe in such a thing? Oh, I think it's bound to happen at some point because we're evolving slowly and computers are, are evolving very rapidly. Uh, but uh, it's only the good science fiction writers and a few futurists like Ray who see uh, how, uh, how large these changes will be. Yeah. The trouble is this singularity won't happen just because of Moore's law or just because of time. What has to happen is uh, some particular area of research has to show how to do it. So. Uh, it's easy to say that in the year 2030, computers will be a billion times faster than now, so they'll be smart. But I don't think they'll be smart unless you find the right ways to program them. And then I think the computers we have today could beat people at most things. Interesting. I guess it comes down to what is smart. I mean, do we even know what, 
our, our brains work well enough to know what smart is? I think it's uh, 50 or, or so different kinds of skills. Uh, for example, some people think that there's something magical called consciousness. Right. And if you look at my uh, book, uh, you'll see a list of about 30 quite different things that uh, you're likely to use the word conscious for. But uh, each of them is an interesting technical problem. and. There's lots of work to do to get machines to be smart. So you don't feel that uh, in terms of consciousness or intelligence, brain, uh, human brains and mechanical brains are on parallel tracks? You believe that, in fact, that we could conv converge at some point? Oh, well, the question is, are there really any very different ways to think than the way we do it? It seems yeah. to me what, what our brains do is something uh, very elegant for easy problems with a lot of data we do things in parallel for hard problems where everything depends in a complicated way on what you've done before we have to do things serially so the front of our brain is a serial computer and the most of the rest are parallel computers and uh, you know it's taken a couple of hundred million years to evolve this so it might take us a couple of dozen years to evolve it in our computers. That's not that long, I guess, if you think of it in that, in that term at all. Will there come a time when I'm starting to put mechanical things, nanotech or something, in the brain to supplement the brain? I'm sure that uh, that'll start to happen pretty soon. But what I really look forward to is when we can do the opposite and transfer our brains out of these uh, flimsy bodies uh. into into some hardware that uh, has fewer bugs and is easier to replace the motherboard when you have to. <laughs> I, I like that idea a lot. <laughs> I could use a RAM replacement right now. Because the pathetic this... thing in uh, modern computers is that it's cheaper to replace the whole motherboard than fix three gates that are making the trouble. Abs and, uh, absolutely, absolutely that's... true. That's a little bit the case with us, too, I'm afraid. We've always, you know, since RUR, there's been a fascination in the last century with robotics. And I think this is going to be the year of the robot movie. There's at least three in production right now. Are robots about to become humanoid in the next, say, decade or so? I think people are going in the wrong direction on uh, robotics. What happens is almost all the energy all over the world is, has been spent in building very stupid physical robots that go around and do things that... Uh, any one-year-old can do. Yeah. And uh, uh, whenever I meet somebody doing that, I tell them to quit the hardware and work on the theory of theories about how to make it smarter, because then you can make a very clumsy robot and it and program it to be graceful. Professor Minsky, what a joy and a pleasure it is to talk to you, a man who has been thinking about thinking for more than 50 years, and uh, what a fascinating subject it is. I appreciate your time. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. To read more about the amazing Marvin Minsky's ideas and research, go online to thescreensavers.com.